Welcome to Make Pods Great Again. I'm your host, John, back with my girl, Nikki. Nikki, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Didn't I see you like five minutes ago? I know, like twice in one day. I'm I not know. mad about it. It's been a crazy day for me already, but we have a really special guest. Matt Chan is with us. Matt, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you guys for having me on. I'm yeah. so excited to have you. <laughs> for those of you who don't know Matt, Matt is an OG CrossFitter. So this is true. I was... um. What podcast I was watching? Oh, it was um, Joe Rogan. I was watching. I watched oh, yeah. his podcast on YouTube, and I forget who he had on, but they were talking about they had a celebrity on, and the celebrity was saying, "Do you know how like when you, whenever you first get into whatever you do, whoever is quote unquote famous is always the most famous person you will ever meet, right? Totally. And so all of the OG CrossFitters for me, Matt, are like the most famous ones. So it's like you, Annie Thor's daughter, Rich Froning, like. You know, I started in 2011, and uh, it was at uh, the regionals in Columbus. It was a rich one that year. It's the year Scott Panchek made his first regionals and went to the games the first year, which is why I was there to watch him. And you were there walking around. I'm not even sure you were competing. But I just remember me and my buddies were, like, all in the stands, and you come walking by, and I'm like, there's Matt Chan, there's Matt Chan. And everybody's like, Matt. They all start yelling at you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like. So every time I meet an OG, like I, I get all geeky because it's like, oh, there's a, you know, famous. I'm fanboying uh, real hard right now. I am. I'm a fanboy. Yeah. Fan yeah. For me, it was, uh, it was Greg Amundsen and Greg Everett. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, Greg Amundsen, Greg Everett, and uh, of course, uh, the, the, some of the girls like Annie and Nicole yeah. and Eva. Mm -hmm. You know, like back back in the day, like seeing all those guys in the videos of Santa Cruz. Uh, that was, that was my OGs, like the fire breathers. Oh, I'm still so like at the last games, we were at the, um, the fit aid after party and I was walking around and I'm in street clothes. So I don't think anybody's gonna recognize me. And Annie Sakamoto walked over to me and she's like, Oh my God, I love your page. Can I get a photo with you? And I nearly wet my pants. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I love you. You're like the original, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. it's, it's so weird. And, you know, and like of course, you guys need to follow this up with like a kids these days, man. They don't even know CrossFitters. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of true. Like, you know, now it's, yeah, now everybody's, you know, it's all, you know, Frazier and Hepner and, you know, kind of this, all these, you know, and actually it's even the younger ones than that now. It's really like Saxon and Spencer and those yeah, guys people are coming up on, you know, so it's, yeah, it's just changing quick, but I still, they, they I still fangirl. really old. They really do though. Yeah. It's so yeah. true. It is. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Like, I, dude, I have a photo from that regionals. Um, I went down to watch Scott because he was training with us. And so I went back and looked at the photos the other day, and I have photos of Scott rubbing Saxon's head. Saxon was like 12, right? <laughs> and oh you should see the photos. Like, he just looks like a baby. Like, he probably weighed 90 pounds, maybe, you know, just this tiny little kid, you know? It's so funny looking at it in hindsight. Oh, my God. We're yeah. so old. I can't. Yeah. Well, I'm old. That was, a, that was the first time I met Scott. Yeah, I remember that. And I, I, I was actually there at the uh, at that regional to work on the announcer uh, with the the announcing crew because mm -hmm. I think it was the first the first cast yep. because it was a big deal that you know Graham was there, yep. and Rich was there, and you know some of these guys that were coming up were all there, and uh, they wanted to put it on the live feed. And I had the opportunity to work with. Who was it? Well, oh, sure, it was uh, sure was there. Justin. It was yeah. Justin uh, from CrossFit Radio. Remember when they used to do that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Back in the JJ. Yeah, JJ. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and I remember asking uh, 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 Panchik if, if he would be willing to do an interview. And he's like, who are you? What, what do you want? <laughs> what? what? <That's> why? <laughs> it's so funny. I yeah. know. That's so funny when I think back to it because I actually met Cherie before I met you. No, oh, really. Just working on the broadcast. And I was the first time I met her, I was like, Hi, you're so awesome. This was a great weekend. Can you please say your husband? I'm a really big fan. I was uh, like, this because like John said, OGs, OGs in the sport. And I will say old, uh, old for this sport, not for this earth. So you guys can give right, yourself a break right. there. It's just yeah, been in the sport of CrossFit for a while. So you know that um yeah. that has been a minute. But even more, I mean, not not too old to stand atop Mount Olympus, good sir. Yeah. I cannot yes. believe that we are in the presence of a Titan right now. It is oh, well, so thank cool. you very much. <laughs> so cool to catch up with you right on the on the uh, heels of your big win. I want to. I have like made up questions. I have so many questions about 
everything that you went through Shoot. when you were on that show. But I guess just first overall, like what in the world was that experience like for you? I mean, you're so experienced in sport and in life, but, but TV sport, like it just feels so different. It was different. Um, the, the Hollywood side of the whole event was definitely uh, new to me. I mean, the CrossFit Games has always had a little bit of that going on. Um, but at the end of the day, it was entirely different from what this was. Um, the first week alone, and in the CrossFit Games, you know, we usually get there a little bit early and we would have our uniform fitting, followed yeah, by some interviews yeah. and stuff like that. But this is like, you know, we would do the uniform fitting and then we would do literally a whole week of B-roll uh, video shoots. And like what? We hadn't like done what, what does that mean? All the stuff that you see, um, I guess B-rolls and interviews. So like, you know, hey, here's a, here's a bar, here's some plates. We want you to just do kind of what you would do with your exercise and we'll kind mm -hmm. of fit that in where it's needed. Um, and you end up doing a thousand repetitions in one day, you know? Um, oh, that wasn't, that was pretty good, but we're going to do it from this angle. So there was mm -hmm. literally a whole week of that. Um, and at first it felt very phony. Um, I definitely did not do very well with some of the interview stuff, but I feel like I got better at it as we kind of loosened up and they were like, yeah, come on, let's be the real you. Yeah. It's like, I have no idea what that is at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, then, then, you know, once we started the competition, um, we would go every other day generally um and they would split us up by region so you would see for example like lunar impact that's the one where you push the door that is my favorite one yeah oh my too. god i loved watching that one so that was set up only one day and they had each of the regions go through it so one event would be set up you'd go through it they'd break that event down and then they would put up a second event and then you would see, um, then we would have a day off and they would switch the two events for the same three regions, but mm -hmm. those, those competitors would not do them. So the way that you end up seeing it in the show, it's, it's totally a different order than how it was filmed. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So the other, and the other part of that was that we never got to see each other compete at all. So we were back okay. in like a green room. Huh. And there was no tele, no television, no nothing. So, you know, we would just sit in this room and wait for people to come back. Uh, and you kind of like try to judge their faces as they walk in the room. It's like, okay, who, who won that? <laughs> and were you not allowed to talk about it either? Uh, no, but you know what it's like. I mean, you don't want to be like, uh, so which one of you two just lost? Raw, right. yeah, of course. <laughs> Who's going home? Sorry, yeah. loser. <laughs> right. Exactly. So oh my gosh. It, stuff like that was, I mean, it was totally new to me. Um, and it was fun for sure. Uh, but there was a lot of waiting around. Mm. Um, there was makeup and stuff. So I mean, it was definitely Hollywood. <laughs> Good thing that mascara really makes your eyes pop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my biggest question and the thing I'm most curious about is because we had uh, Danny on the show after her first regional win, she kind of let us in on the fact that for her, at least, it didn't really feel like the greatest ultimate test of fitness. Because like you said, like you're doing like one thing a day and you're, we're CrossFitters. We're used to doing CrossFit Games competitions with like five events a day. And so, you know, when she was yeah. explaining it, she was just saying like they wanted me to to make it seem like it was the hardest thing I've ever done, the, the biggest test of fitness I've ever had. And it kind of wasn't. How did you feel? Um, yeah, I, th I think they were, I mean, they were races, which is totally different. So yeah. it didn't really matter. Um, you know, some of them were head to head races where what you're doing impacts your, comp your, your competition. Uh, right, right. Like for example, that lunar impact one where you're pushing the door back and forth, you're, whatever you're doing is, is impacting what, what your competition's doing. Whereas mm -hmm. there are, the other events were races where it's just complete the task as fast as possible and you either won or lost. Um, and, you know, it was interesting. I mean, I think they were physically events, um, but they weren't, they weren't uh, as demanding as CrossFit Games events were. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and even that, that's not necessarily true because some of the CrossFit uh, Games events were easy. Yeah. So I, I think, I think it's just, you know, they're not testing fitness. It's not, it's not what they were going for. It's just, can you complete these events faster than the next person? 
You know, Danny also mentioned that uh, after she won an event, The Rock came over and put his arm around her and she rubbed his peck. Did you get to rub his peck at all? <laughs> John with the hard questions. I know. Yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, that guy is such a giant and he's so imposing. It was just like, you, you kind of want to get all cuddled up in there and oh. like snuggle in. She was so How funny. I feel about it whenever I think about him. Mm-hmm. She was so yeah. funny about it. She's like, he's got his arm around me. And next thing I know, my hand's on his chest and I'm sitting there going, am I rubbing his peck? And I can't stop. What's and happening? I just... Oh, it's like I was like, oh, please, God, I need to see this. I need to see yeah. this. What was what was he like? Did you have a chance to get to uh, him at all? No, not really. Honestly, yeah. it was uh, it was our our exposure to him was pretty limited because he was actually shooting a movie, um, which I think they've just restarted the shooting oh, of damn. it. Um, I think it's called Red Notice, something like that. Okay. Um, him and Gal Gadot, and I think Ryan Reynolds. So he damn. was actually coming. Co- yeah coming and going from shooting the movie to over to the next set over, which was the Titan games. And he was just splitting his time. So we didn't have a ton of time to spend with him, but when, when there was that, that moment or two where we'd, we'd be around him, uh, he was so down to earth. He would ask us questions about ourselves. Um, of course, as you can imagine, Will Sutton had the most hysterical conversations with uh, <laughs> the rock ever. The, here's one example. He wa- uh, the rock walks in, and uh, he's like, so, you know, where are you guys from? You know, this, that, and the other. What kind of training do you do? Cool. Uh, and then he's like, yeah, so uh, what, what do you guys got for me? And Will Sutton, like, takes his opportunity to be like, hey, Rock, you hunt? <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Dwayne Johnson was like, he's like, did you just ask me if I hunt? <laughs> so it was really, it was pretty funny. Oh my God. Like, like, I pay people to pay people to hunt for those people. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my like god! Fished one time when when I was seven. Like yeah. we uh the the Brazier household is a big Chan supporter and fan, so we were rooting for you the whole way through. But I I Thank do you. have to say that Will Sutton was my favorite like character on oh, that yeah. show. Like holy, mo- every time he went up against anyone, I was like, no way, no way, this guy's got it up against this super fit character over here. Or like this guy right. who can do handstands or like this guy who whatever. And every time, I mean, just goes to show what, I mean, talk about functional fitness, right? Like that he's kind of like the pinnacle of, he just works. He just grunt work. He just like works. He just does grunt work. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems yeah, to work really rural, well. Yeah. Grew up in rural North Carolina. And uh, I mean, you guys saw the videos too. It's just, I mean, that's what he did was just actual work, like physical mm-hmm. labor. Um, and it didn't, and it doesn't help that his, uh, it doesn't hurt that his dad was a, uh, you know, a very strong weight lifter as well, like power lifter. I, nice. I watched, I saw, I saw them in the gym and watched his dad bench 405. And I think he's got to oh. at least be 60 years old. So, Damn. uh, pretty incredible. I mean, at 60 years mm-hmm. old to bench 405, I'm 42 and I've maybe got 315 at this point in time. So goals, super oh, yeah. goals. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, well, look, I'm I'm in Cleveland, and in week one, you beat Joe Thomas, who is a legend here in the city of Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lineman, you know, he's a starting uh, tackle, I think, if I remember right, for the Browns for a decade. He's our, our only good player for like a decade, you know. So, <laughs> so thank you for he's breaking Cleveland's player. heart again. I had to rush him. Yeah, he's the only – and actually, it was oh, like man. crazy close. Like, you guys had a really close race, like That's right awesome. out of the gate. Yeah, it was fantastic. But – I think I think he and I uh, both understood pacing better than probably the rest of the competitors when it came to Mount Olympus. You could tell it was going to be a longer event, minimum of three minutes, um, and there was going to be places you could rest and places where you really had to gun it. And right when we took off, I was like, "Ah, oh, crap! This guy knows what he's doing. He's not mm-hmm. going to, you know, shoot his load out of the gate. He's going to, you know, conserve, be be uh, be a little bit more relaxed until the end when he knows he has to give it." And uh, that's exactly what ended up happening. And when he got that uh, stone behind him and he started just walking forward with it, it was like, oh, crap. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a big, strong dude, and he is super smart, you know. Uh, and he's, lot, he's actually lost a lot of weight since he quit playing football, like a lot of those guys do. So he's much smaller than he was in his NFL playing day. So he's more athletic, you know, because of that. But still broke our heart, yeah. man. Just like that. Yeah. Just like I think that. he said 90 pounds or something like that. I mean, yeah. it was – damn. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, he said that the thing that he's one of the things that he's added in is uh, swimming. So hmm. um, he's like a master's level swimmer, and uh, you know, I, I grew up swimming, so we kind of had that to connect with as well. So it's kind of cool. Man, he should try CrossFit. 
<laughs> well, I, I wouldn't doubt that the stu- he would excel at it. I'd be <laughs> Seriously. surprised if he stunk at anything, you know? Well, yeah, totally. I'll, I'll, I'll send him an invite, Nikki. He's probably just right <laughs> down the street. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. He'd love to work out at your home gym with you, John. Yeah. I, first of all, I don't have enough weights in my home gym for a guy like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I have a total, like, if everything was on the bar, it's like 335. So that's it. Like, that'd be his warm yeah. He'd be curling. He'd just do, do like, curls. Bilateral stuff, you know? Yeah. Or yeah. unilateral, whatever, one arm at a time. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Matt, one of, the, one of the most interesting things I thought was – how um, like intimately you got to share your personal story through the Titan games. And, and I know it and, and John knows it because we're big fans of yours from the beginning, but can you just, for the people who maybe haven't heard it, talk about your injury and, and what it meant for you really to share that with like the world? Because we knew, our CrossFit world knew, but the rest of the world now got a, a chance to hear kind of your comeback story. Yeah, it was pretty neat. You know, I think there was like, 3.7 million viewers every week, which is absolutely oh, insane. Um, but yeah, so my, my story, like, you know, I, I competed in uh, six of the CrossFit games from 2008 until 2013. Um, 2012 was my best year. I had finished second place. Uh, I had like four top tens. And, you know, what was really cool about um, the CrossFit games for me was the time period in which I was involved. We were uh, basically optimizing the sport uh, and the movements yeah. and making them more efficient and learning on a day to day and, and year by year basis on how to be better CrossFit athletes for the CrossFit games. And a lot of the stuff that you see nowadays is a result of what, uh, you know, myself and a lot of those guys that were involved in those first bunch of years, uh, you know, things that we, we learned and developed together, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, but in 2013, uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I didn't do so well in the CrossFit games. I think I took like 19th or something like that. And, uh, my head wasn't really super into it. So I came back in 2014 and I was really training super hard to, to get my head back in the game and, and give it another push. And I ended up hurting my back and I had to sit out of the, the open that year. So that really sucked. Um, it's the first open I missed since they started doing it. Mm. And I, felt pretty good towards the middle of the of the springtime, like maybe like May, uh, April, May. And I started training again, back felt good. And uh, Shri and I were on a bike ride on the 4th of July of 2014. And I just took a simple little fall on the bike and I caught the handlebars in my, like the crease of my hip. And it hurt really bad. I mean, all of my weight fell on that. And um I was going downhill, so all my weight was going forward. And when the t- handlebars turned, I just struck myself in the leg. And it's one of those things like when you scrape your shin on a box where you're like, oh my God, this is the worst pain I've ever experienced mm-hmm. in my life. And you, and you just kind of hop around until it goes away. Yeah. I was, ho- I was hoping for that. But um, I, I just looked, looked in my pants to see if like, there was any like, actual damage. And I could see that my leg was swelling. So I took my leg out of the, out of the shorts and I just sat there and watched it. And it, my whole inner leg filled with blood within like five minutes. It looked like there was an, it literally looked like, uh, like a squash or something like that in my leg. It looked terrible. So, so I knew I ruptured something and, uh, and when Sheree rolled around and, and came up on me, I was just like, look, don't don't freak out. But I was like, we, we need to call 911. Um, I'm, I'm really hurt. And I think this is what happened. I probably ruptured an artery. Um, but luckily, I'm not bleeding uh, out of my skin. So I think I'm going to be okay. I just we just need to figure this out. And uh, she ran around uh, trying to find cell service because neither one of us had cell service. Oh, and my God, of course not. Yeah, she found a couple that was camping in the area. And they were able to call out. So she comes running back, and at that time, it was like I literally had a butt cheek on the front of my leg, and I was like, uh, it's really bad, Tree. And she, you know, she and I were as calm as we could be, and um, within probably about 20 to 30 minutes, the first search and rescue guy rolled up. And Oh, my God, that long? Oh, yeah. yeah we just uh, sat there. Good and we couldn't Lord. put pressure on it because we didn't want to rupture it. Uh, right. And have it, and have it, you know pop my skin. Um, 
So this guy started an IV and gave me some pain meds, which was awesome because I was in a ton of pain. Um, and, and that's when the whole rescue kind of started, you know, the rest of them showed up and they brought me into a field where, uh, the ambulance met us. The ambulance took me to a different field where the helicopter could land. And within it, I'd say from the minute I, I crashed, it was probably, I'd say an hour, hour and a half. Uh, before I reached uh, level one trauma center. And for about half of that time, I didn't have adequate blood, blood flow to my, my right foot and lower leg. So what they had to do is they had to open all the skin and cut the fascia open so that, uh, so the fascia is basically like the sausage casing on, on your uh, muscles. Nice. It provi- yeah, <laughs> it provides uh, compression, which makes your muscle stronger. Um, but that compression also limited my blood flow because there was so much compression because of the excess blood in there that uh, I wasn't circulating blood properly to my foot. And they cut the fascia on both sides of my lower leg and my uh, upper leg as well. And, uh, you know, those pictures have kind of circulated the internet a thousand. I remember those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty freaking gnarly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as recovery goes, um, that actually took the most time because I had, I don't even know how many stitches I had these Frankenstein stitches, uh, from basically my butt cheek all the way down to my ankle. Um, and it, they were so tight that I couldn't bend my leg because here's this, here's this little side story that probably hasn't been told is that the doctor came in he's like, uh, Hey, so, you know, with these, with this wound that you have open on, on your leg, on these wounds, um, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a wound back, which sucks out the inflammation. And it had a little tub and literally it would collect this orange jelly in this tub. Uh-uh. And, he's like, yep. and he's like, when we get it down to a normal size, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, skin graft. And, uh, I was like, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So when stitch me I, up, do whatever. Yeah. When can we do that? And he's like, well, we're going to plan on doing that at about a week. So I had a ton of time to just sit there. So I started Googling like skin grafts. And mm. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys have done that ever. It's it. There is some bad, bad skin grafts out there. Oh my God. So, this whole conversation my, is making my butt tingle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it, I saw some pictures that were extremely gnarly and, uh, I, when he came back in after that, I was like, is there another option other than the skin graft thing? And he's like, well, what we can do is we can actually take like these stitches and anchor them on both sides and close the distance. So then we can stitch, uh, along the, the wound. And, uh, he's like, it might not work. We might not be able to close that gap, but we can give that a shot first. And, uh, I was like, man, let's do that. And they did it. And the problem was it was, it was tearing my skin. Those, those Frankenstein stitches was tearing my skin. So I still have all these dots where they, where the skin went from this little pinhole to then kind of like a a bigger, a bigger hole. Uh And, and uh, I'll tell you what though, I'll take that over, over the skin graft any day. Really? Yeah. It healed very well. Um, And you know, I'm 99% what I was before. So that's a pretty good percentage. I'll take those. Yeah. And, and then from there, it was just a matter of just recovering, um, you know, basically allowing those, uh, those surgeries to recover and uh, see what I was capable of. And I tried in 2015 to make it to the CrossFit Games again, and I took ninth place in regionals, and they only took the top five, so I was super close. Um, but, you know, honestly, that was a really good uh, indication to me that it was like, you know what, I'm happy with what I've done with CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's time for me to go back to what my real passion is and go back to being a firefighter. Um, and, you know, train people and do all that stuff and, and shift the focus away from being selfish and training and all that stuff and be a better human. Um, because training is a selfish thing, you know, it's, it's on your time. It's your, your recovery is a priority. Your nutrition is a priority. Uh, you know, your sleep is a priority. It's all about you all the time. And I did that for a long, long time. So I felt like it was like a good indication that it was like, you know what, it's time for me to be a better husband, a better family member, a better firefighter, a better employee, better, you know, mental in a metal, better mental state. So sure. yeah. 
Have you seen or felt any sort of different vibes now that you've been able to tell that story to, oh, you know, a, a cool 3.7 million people <laughs> every week? It's just wild you know to me. Like now everybody knows that, that, that yeah, what have you, what have you heard or, or seen from that? It's pretty neat that uh, people do recognize that I overcame a pretty big injury and was still still able to do something like the Titan Games, you know. And um, it's it's neat to you know I take it for granted now, you know, this that that was part of my life. That, you know, I just got messed up and worked through it, and that was it. I mean, we've all been through something like that to some degree, um, but you know, to have other people kind of give me that reassurance uh, that you know, it inspired them and that, you know, they're trying to work through an injury now too. And they asked me questions about like, what, what did you do for your recovery and how did you keep a good mindset? And it's just like, you know what, maybe I do have a little something to pass along about this. So 3.7 million people, if I, if I can change just a couple people's lives or help them feel better about their situation, that's, that's really cool. And it's an awesome opportunity for me. And huge opportunity, I think, for like the sport of CrossFit. So when people reach out to you and they're like, hey, what did you do? How do you train? You know, like, how do I get to be like you or, or recover like you did or whatever? Do you have a chance to like share your programming or your methodology with them? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely opportunities to, you know, our program is uh, Train for the Win uh, Thrive has done really good since the, the show. Um, it was doing great before, but, you know, now it's doing fantastic, uh, you know, and it's neat for me because it's designed, I design it for myself. I write a program for myself, which I share for others. Um, and it's, you know, it's cool because a lot of these other guys are in the same situation where they're like, you know what, I, I did CrossFit and I followed, you know, I did muscle ups and handstand push ups and squat snatches and all the handstand walks and all the things. Um, but where I'm at in my life right now, that stuff doesn't matter to me. And I really just want, you know, good programming that'll get me in and out of the gym in 60 minutes. And I get a lot of fitness from the program and that's where I'm at. So when I started writing this program and sharing it with people, a lot of people identified that uh, with it, that, you know, they're in a similar situation. So um, that's cool. Um, but then the other part of that is too, that, you know, I feel like, you know, the, the Titan game showed that you don't have to train three hours a day to maintain a high level of fitness. You know, is it the most elite fitness in the world? No, it's not. I'm not going to win the Titan Games. In fact, I'm not going to even, I'm sorry, the uh, CrossFit Games. In fact, I'm probably not even going to qualify in my age group uh, for the CrossFit Games. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I can go on to a show like the Titan Games and perform very well at almost all of the events. And that should be an indication that it prepares you well for life. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. So this programming you're doing, is it designed for a specific age group or is it just for everyone? Like how, how do you, how do you plan it out? Yeah, that's, it's, I, I don't want to like pigeonhole myself into saying that I, uh, I program for the 35 to 50 year old men. Um, but I will say that that's generally who follows the program. Uh, hmm. we do have, we do have some women and stuff like that. Um, and, and some younger people and as well as some older people. Um, but it seems like generally our, uh, our age group that is the, the primary uh, subscribers to the program is like 35 to 50 year old uh, men that don't have a lot of time that want a no nonsense program. Um, our videos on that we include with each movement and with each warm up, they're like 20 second videos, and they're like, "Thank you for not turning this into a 10 minute video." Where, where <laughs> on I'm how to do one push up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. So sometimes I mean, more again, is is more. <laughs> yeah, Too much. entertain. There's entertainment and then there's the stuff where it's just like, I just want to know how to do the fucking movement. That's right. it. Right. right. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. One of my favorite parts of watching you on the show was just watching how excited Cherie was for you oh, over and over. But you said that you couldn't even really like talk about it right away, which is crazy to me because I would, if I were the two of you, I'd be bursting at the seams. Oh, we had such a tough time. We would, <laughs> we would literally walk around the house Shree, what was her line? She would ask me, she'd be like, she'd be like, hey, who, who won the Titan Games? I won the Titan Games. <laughs> but she couldn't no, say awesome. anything for like, for how long? Like, what was it the was time It was six period? months. It was oh six my months God. Ago. Oh. Yeah, almost to, the, almost to the day. It was about six months to the day today. Um, and it's funny, Nikki, because, you know, 
Um, we took it for granted that we had to, you know, seal the deal and just be quiet for six months. Um, but we couldn't talk about it with anybody, we couldn't celebrate. So it was very anticlimactic. Right. Um, but what's really funny is, you know, I started going back into the gym uh, last week and I noticed people were like, you know, kind of like, like, hey, good job. That was awesome. That's fucking awesome. You know, they're doing like during class and saying, mm-hmm. hey, that's so good. So proud of you. And it's like, <laughs> that's right. These, this, this happened six months ago. These guys just saw it this week. So they're, oh, yeah, yeah. you know. No one, no one has known. No, I mean, we yeah. had a sneaking suspicion that no one was right. going to be able to, to top it like you were. But yeah, that is funny to think about. Like you lived this wild, weird Hollywood experience for like weeks on end and then yep. won. And then you have to be radio silent for like six yep. months. By the way, while the world is going insane and CrossFit is on this bizarre roller coaster, you are sitting on this like awesome news. You're like, God damn oh, it. It's been a weird ass year. Hasn't yeah. it? I mean, like, like literally everything that, you know, we've all been, you know, involved in for so long is just so strange so now. Bizarre. Jeez. Well, I, I thought it was amazing that all four of you guys that made it to the finals were CrossFitters. Like for me, that's uh that's an amazing feat. And mm-hmm. and such a great, you know, moment of ambassadorship for the sport. Like I don't I don't know about you, but I still hear from people all the time. They find I do CrossFit, they you know give me hell for it. Oh, you're gonna get injured or oh it's not good for you. And you know, to see all four go in and make it to the finals is just spectacular well yeah and, and, and there was a bunch more of them too um you know that that use yep. crossfit uh primarily as their training method um you know kareem uh brinson mm-hmm. he was he was a crossfitter you know he's a really inspirational guy too he lost a crap ton of weight he's got you know actually uh he goes by i think remy b uh is his is his dj name right um he he he's got a really inspirational story that you know a lot of crossfitters could identify with you know where he was going on with his life and gained a bunch of weight and he's got pictures of it that he posts on his instagram and it's like holy crap that's the same guy i can't even believe it Mm -hmm. and he just fell in love with fitness you know and his daughter does it with him on a daily basis it's just one of those you know it's just a typical uh crossfit story and then um kelly stone he was uh in, in one of the first few episodes and uh, she made it on teams, I think, to the CrossFit Games. So, I mean, yep. like, very high-level CrossFitter. Um, let's see. The guy who wears the booty Oh, shirts. Robbie. Yes. Yeah, Robbie. He was Robbie. a regionals athlete. He was. Uh, and, and not to mention, Robbie was, and so was uh, Andrew. Andrew Hanus. Uh, he he oh, is really? a – Yeah, he started CrossFit, and he got into powerlifting. Um, yep. I'm sorry, strongman stuff through CrossFit. And now he just does the strongman stuff with a little bit of CrossFit uh, sprinkled in. So, you know, I think CrossFit as a training method is, it's obviously a uh, part of most athletes' lives now in some, some way, shape, or form. They may not yeah. call it CrossFit, but they're doing multi- multi-modality cross training, um, you know, to varying intensities. And uh, again, at the Titan Games, you, you saw a lot of those guys did it, and a lot of them didn't. So, um, If only we could have said the word CrossFit. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't, right. I don't know. They, I don't know why they didn't. Honestly, I don't know I, either. I, I don't know if there was a rule against that. Um, you know, but I, what I will say is this, and this question has come up so much. I mean, I literally probably get the question in my DM like three or four times a day, where it's oh like, God. yeah, but why didn't they say anything about CrossFit? It'd be such a testament to the training program. And you know, the way that I've always said that uh, is that they didn't mention anybody's training program. Right. Um, they focused on the individual, their personality, the adversity that, that they've overcome during their life, um, the things that really make that person unique in what they are. Um, that's what they really honed in on. And frankly, if they said, like each of these uh, athletes, you know, these ones are bodybuilders, these ones are power lifters, these ones are strong men, these ones are crossfitters, it really would have been a pretty boring story. Um, mm. except for the fact that, you know, if you idolized one of the, uh, participants of the Titan games and you wanted to do what they were doing, then you could follow along with that. And that would, that would have been cool. But, you know, I think, um, for me, I'm glad that they didn't mention CrossFit, uh, because I'm a firefighter. That's right. when, when you talk about the things that I identify with, I, I identify myself as a husband and a firefighter. That's the two most important things in my life. and the other elements, if you talk about like my athletic career, CrossFit's a major part of that. 
but so is swimming. Right. So is mountain biking. So is rock climbing. So is all these sports that I've done over the years. They've all contributed in one shape, uh, way, shape, or form to my uh, athletic ability that allowed me to win the Titan Games. And if you think about that, I wouldn't have done as well in the CrossFit Games if they wouldn't have mentioned that I was a swimmer. Right. I mean, that's for sure. But, you know, I think the, the thing about it is, is that many of those athletes that are CrossFit athletes, Margo, Danny, and myself, uh, especially, um, that's what we became like Insta famous for is, is CrossFit. And that's, you know, they, I think a lot of CrossFitters wanted us to say that to win one for the team, if you will. And um, I, I totally recognize that. But, you know, I think it's important for me to get the message out there that I don't just do CrossFit. Right. Um, I do, I bodybuild, you know, and, and to, for me to say I'm a CrossFitter, I'd also have to say I'm a, I'm a bodybuilder. I also am into powerlifting. I'm also into Olympic weightlifting, and I've done that alone for a long time. So, you know, it, it's too difficult to name one training program, and it really wouldn't do anybody any good to, to hone in on that stuff. I like that. I like that, that way of looking at it a lot. Well, I yeah. think that, and part of the problem with CrossFit, it's not a problem, but um, part of the issue with CrossFitters is probably what you're hearing in those DMs or what I often hear in DMs, those people that are in their first, for like first to third, maybe fourth year of CrossFit, they're still fanatical. They're like cult-like oh, yeah. oh, yeah. about yeah. CrossFit. They're crazy about it. And then once you cross like kind of that fourth or fifth year, then you start realizing, oh, there's other methods of fitness that are very similar. They give me the same buzz that I can now go out and do. I can get on a bike or I can go swim or I can, and they start exploring that. And all of a sudden, CrossFit's still great, but it's not the only thing that's out there. But right. you got that vocal minority of, of these new CrossFitters that are just crazy about it. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a community-based thing. It's totally. a community-based thing yeah. where, you know, people identify so strongly with it that it, um, you know, it becomes part of their identity. And I, and I, I'm not going to lie. It did, it did for me as well, mm -hmm. but that became a very health unhealthy, uh, a relationship where, you know, if I, if I, um, for example, if, if I were at a seminar that I was teaching at and somebody had a question that would, uh, fly in the face of the CrossFit method, you know, I would tell them why they're wrong and not be accepting of a different opinion. And that's really cult-like behavior. And I was responsible for that. That was me. Um, and I think when, when I reached the end of my, my road uh, in the CrossFit games and with, the, uh, with HQ staff, I think I started to recognize that maybe I wasn't as accepting of other ideas, opinions, programs, training methods, this, that, and the other that I should have been. And uh, it really opened my eyes to how good a lot of the other fitness programs are that are out there. Um, and that's, and that's, uh, it was a lesson for me. So I think, again, that's just maybe some of those other people are in that stage of their, of their CrossFit lifespan, maybe. Oh, yeah. It's but a definitely. journey we definitely all go through, 100%. Yeah. Well, We've well, all yeah, been sure. at every stage of it, or if you well, haven't yet, you will. When all the craziness went down, I, I can't tell you how many people messaged and would ask me, well, do you think these gyms that are unaffiliating are going to continue to teach the CrossFit method? And I would re reply to them, like, do you guys think Greg Glassman invented the thruster? Because he didn't. Like, right. you know, these, these movements belong to everybody. Like, you know, CrossFit didn't invent the numbers 21, 15, 9. Now they use them a lot, but come on, like. Right. Uh, you know, other training methods do this stuff. It isn't like exclusive to us. We're just fanat We're just more fanatical about it than other people, right. maybe. You know, right, right. Organ or the what they've done that was very unique was organize the method into a uh, an ad an adaptable program right. that you can apply in, in a fitness facility, and right. that's that's very unique uh, the way that they did it. And they, you know, credit where credit is due. That's yeah. that's something that Greg put together. So. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And one of the things for me that's most exciting about CrossFit itself is just like the stories that come out of it. People like you mentioned earlier, people like change their lives through it. And so now you're doing your own programming. Have you started to see any of that in your own programming? Like people as they started to apply what you're teaching them, coming back to you and saying, hey, look what, look what happened to me after X amount of time? Or is your programming still too new to see that? Oh, yeah. You know, the great part is about, you know, the train for the wind stuff uh, that we do is 
we have, so we have a couple of different programs. The, the, the one program that my business partner, Eric writes is, uh, is called tribe. And, uh, it basically takes all the things that we've learned over the years about how to run a, uh, a training facility program better. Um, you know, how to run warmups, uh, skill specific, uh, warmups as well so that they can transition into a workout in a timely fashion and not get bored of holding a PVC forever, you know, all that stuff. He's been training in, uh, in CrossFit Park City, which I think is now across, uh, I'm sorry, Park City Fitness mm. uh, for over 10 years. So, and like on a weekly basis. So he's got such skill uh, in that, in that realm that, you know, he applies it to the tribe uh, program and, and people absolutely love it. And they say, you know, this has changed the way I train people. It's I've learned so much just simply by following the program and sharing it with my trainers that I've become a better trainer because of it. So that's really rewarding for both of us. And then when it comes to the Thrive program, I, I, like I said, I'm programming for me and the fact that other men and women um, that are like firefighters, law enforcement and stuff like that, that are limited on time, that they're having such great results and that they're having fun working out again and that it's not a comp competition every day mm -hmm. that they feel bad about themselves at the end of the day. That's what I love about it. I mean, we scale everything from, you know, a, a, a barbell with weights down to uh, here's 20 different ways to do the same exercise that's appropriate for all age groups, all categories. So see, I, it's I, nice. I, I was able to get rid of that mindset of it's a competition every day by just working out with people I could never beat. So <laughs> that, that worked out perfect for me. You know, then it's, you well, just never have to compete. There's that thing where we work out against ourselves too, right? And I think, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we even hold ourselves to a high regard where it's like, I should be able to do this. I should be able to do this in this amount of time. And then at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, uh, the, the, the session and you, let's say you don't reach your goal, you're like, well, I suck, you yeah. know? And one of the things that we program in, in the, in every workout is a intended stimulus. So for example, usually two to three days a week, we have an intended stimulus that's like, hey, we want you to go nice and easy on this one. Just move from exercise to exercise at a moderate pace. Uh, you shouldn't feel blasted by the end of it. And, and I think that really lets people off the hook on like, okay, I don't have to kill myself here uh -huh. and I'm still getting the intended stimulus of this workout. I think that's really important because that's the kind of thing that you can get from a coach when you go to a class. So if you're yes. looking for programming that you can do on your own, usually that type of information is missing. And that's what makes people burn out by themselves because they don't really know what the point of this is. If the point is to redline, then I'll do it, but it better be a three minute workout. Do you know what I mean? But if the point is to go like long and steady, that, that really important stimulus note is oftentimes missing when people are on their own. So that's, I think that's yes. really cool. Yeah, yeah and it's really, sure. it's really cool too, because the, the people that we work with are generally garage gymmers yeah. and it's awesome So cool. because that's, that is like where my heart is, is like working out in a garage. But you know, we've also I, like, I've had the luxury of both training in a gym and training people in a gym. And I know just like you guys know that unless you tell them that intended stimulus, they're going to interpret that workout any way that they want. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not why you programmed it. <laughs> so right. So, you know, like, hey, go slow. Or in this one, it's like, hey, I want you to be able to do all 30 reps in B set fewer. Use a web to achieve that goal. So important. So let's overlooked. Them the <laughs> yeah, let's, let's them off the hook, though, too, that, that it's like, okay, I don't have to use 135 pounds. I can only do three sets of 10 in, with 65 pounds. So that's what I'm going to use. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, so many CrossFitters, like we, we're all nuts. We take it to the extreme every chance. So it's Absolutely. great that you're giving really specific, really specific advice here for sure. Yeah. Hey, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, we did this whole interview with you and I didn't ask, cause I don't really want to get too far into the weeds, but we've just had the craziest last couple months with everything CrossFit and so many changes, changes to the season, changes to the structure and the management. You had such a deep connection to CrossFit being on seminar staff for as long as, as you were, and also obviously being a, an athlete, part of the games and just part of everything going on over there. How are you feeling now that the dust is starting to settle and we've sort of seen all of these changes imparted over at HQ? Yeah. Uh, good question. You know, I think, um, first off, I think 
you're right. I was in, so wholly involved with CrossFit from everything from, you know, uh, for my, my career, you know, I did that full time mm -hmm. from 2012 until 2017. That was my, I did it every weekend of every month of the year and flew all over the world. You know, I created a, a course called the CrossFit competitors course with, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Spieler and Eric O'Connor. And we flew all over the world training people using that thing. And it was such a big part of my life that of course, when I saw, you know, the stuff kind of come down the pipe of, everything from the comments to the reactions to, you know, the stuff that's come up since it's just been, it's just been very disappointing. Um, but I'm not going to lie. It's something that we always kind of knew was possible. Mm. Um, you know, Greg, Greg was always just a little off the wall and, uh, we all knew that. And it was kind of like, you know, me personally, it's always just like stay at arm's length. Um, yeah. don't, don't get burned by the fire. Um, and that's just the way it was. Uh, we're going to keep doing our job and we're going to keep spreading the good word because it's changing people's lives. But it's great to see Eric Rosa take over this thing. You know, I've had the pleasure of meeting Eric a couple different times. The first time, uh, believe it or not, was in a backcountry ski hut nine, mile, nine miles out in the woods uh, above Vail. What? And, yeah. And he, he kind of strolled up. He's like, hey, my name's Eric. I, uh, I own CrossFit Sanitas. And I know you go to CrossFit Roots and CrossFit Verve, and I just want to introduce myself. And it was like, dude, so, so crazy that we're here together right now. Yeah. And then to see him years later uh, as the owner uh, or partner owner of, of CrossFit Incorporated is pretty cool because obviously the guy has had several successful business ventures. And I think he's going to, you're going to see the same thing happen with uh, with CrossFit, you know, I think obviously there's going to be a lot of changes coming down the pipe, which will be good for CrossFit and for uh, the seminars and for the games and for, you know, just using the methodology. Um, it's going to be interesting to watch and interesting to see what happens. Um, but yeah, um, if you have any specific questions, I can maybe answer them. But that's, that's my general thought about it. Uh, I had a really tough time the last couple of years working uh, with seminar staff and really, yeah, I did. It just, it's just, it was tough for me personally. Um, so I, uh, when, when Greg kind of started saying the stuff he was saying and, and we saw all that, that video come out and his reaction in that email and stuff like that, it's just mm -hmm. like, you know what? I don't want to be involved in this. This is not me anymore. This is, it's, I'd rather not be associated with something this toxic. Um, oh, totally. It was also, you know, just the the insensitivity to his comments were just, you know, definitely didn't want I didn't want to be associated with that in any way, shape, or form because that would say that I'm okay with supporting a business that profits, uh, and and the profits go to the leader who is the man making these comments. So yeah, I just wanted nothing to do with it. So that was, well, that, that made my decision pretty easy. Was it a difficult shift, like having that not a part of your life anymore? Or was it almost kind of like free oh, in that respect? Oh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, recently I was already, I felt free of it anyway. Mm -hmm. But the shift from, from 2016 to 2017, like in 2016, I realized, okay, this may not be good for me. This mm -hmm. may be talk. This may be a little toxic for me. Um, I needed to do it because it was my career. I was working every single weekend and I was good at what I did and I was passionate about it. And I loved the people I worked with. Um, but there was elements to it that I just felt weren't very healthy. And, um, you know, I had to, I couldn't just go back to firefighting. I had to get all the state certifications and take the time to do all that. So the second I got that feeling where it's like, this isn't right. Uh, I started, I, I made that transition quickly. And in 2007, I went back to the fire, or 2017, I went back to the fire department. And right away, I just felt like oh, this is where I needed to be. I, I don't know why I stuck with that as long as I did. But um, yeah. it was all in all, I, I don't want to sound like I'm a critic of that time frame of my life because it was some of the best experiences of my life without a doubt. And I, I mean, that's underscored exclamation point 10,000 times over. Um, the CrossFit Games were the most, some of the most rewarding experiences in my life and same with working with seminar staff and the people that I got to meet through all that. So 
eh, just everything was fantastic. It's just, for me, it became a little unhealthy. Yeah. Well, I think regardless of when your time, you know, ended in all of those respects, you have been just one of the greatest ambassadors of all the things that are right in the sport. So it was, it's been awesome watching you on this journey. It's been awesome listening to your story from the beginning to the end and now seeing you in other, excel in other areas like the Titan games and it's just all around, like it's as a fan and as a fan of the sport in general, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is good stuff, man. This is, we're in a good spot right now. I like it. Yeah, I agree. And you know, that, that, and honestly, I've seen a shift too of, you know, CrossFit athletes or participants starting to branch out and try those other, those totally. other things with, which is super cool. You know, I mean, after I did the Leadville last, uh, the Leadville 100 last year, a lot of people reached out and they were like, man, I didn't realize, realize a CrossFitter could, could finish a hundred mile bike race at 10,000 feet. And, you know, you know, it's pretty, pretty rad. And I think a lot of those people had signed up for it. Unfortunately, it got canceled this year, but (laughs) of course, of course, yep. (laughs) But they were like, you know what, I, I can do it too. And, you know, some of these hikes and climbs and that people kind of follow along with too, they're doing all that stuff. So it's, it's super rewarding and uh, I'm glad I can be a part of it. Yeah. That's great stuff. Well, before we, uh, before we wrap up, Matt, where can uh, our followers find your programming? You mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so the Instagram handle is at train FT or train underscore FTW, or you can always just go to uh, train for the train FTW.com. Um, Again, if you're into uh, gym programming, Tribe is our gym program. Uh, we have a competitive program, um, and we pour we pour a lot of heart and soul into it because we, you know, Eric and I were both multi games competitors, and uh, that's important to us. But our real passion is the Tribe and Thrive programs, um, and both of those things. If you want to just try it for two weeks and and sign up, we'll we'll give you your money back if you don't like it because we're just so sure that everybody that enjoys it or that gets, gets involved is going to enjoy it. So uh, just let us know. Yeah. Nice. Well, and you said before he came on, it was ideal for people like me. So for all you old people listening that are, <laughs> that are really broken down and not very strong, it sounds like it's perfect for you. So. Yeah. It, and honestly it is. It's just, it's my goal is to be able to exercise for the rest of my life. Right. And I, and this program I think is the one that's going to allow me to do that. So there you go. Hey, that's so important. I, I, so we talk about this on the show all the time, Matt, like, you know, I, I, I have a, like a personal passion for scaling and not killing myself every single yes. day. I just want to feel yes. good. You know, that's it. Like, that's what I think that's what life's about being happy and feeling good. And so it's great that you guys are focusing on that. So, yeah. Todd Whitman said it best. He said, uh, scale more, more often. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, thanks for coming on, Matt. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you know, been a huge fan for a long time. So it's been a dream come true for me. I know Nikki's, you know, appreciative as well. Uh, For everyone listening, thank you for uh, joining us today and we will chat with you guys soon.